Alright, so for my student dialogue, I did the mirrors false reflection of dialogue on body image. While it wasn't exactly what I expected to be, we really didn't talk about how we feel about how we look. It was more about going back and looking at our own backgrounds, our ethnicities, our religion, all of that. It's not exactly what I would expect it, and, and I didn't like it as much as I would have the other one. But in my group, I feel like we haven't, re we didn't really achieve dialogue. Nobody really wanted to talk much. It was really hard to push people to open them up or whatever. There were like maybe five, six people that were really active talking other than our two facilitators. And I'm not sure. It just, it's a very awkward situation. It wasn't the facilitator's fault. It was more of a just people not wanting to be there and wanting to get everything done as quickly as possible. But, um, so I guess you would say that more of the voices were reserved as in just sitting back and listening but not really saying anything. Honestly, I think I was more of an active voice even though I only really spoke once. I did speak up and tell something very personal about myself because we were talking about how we viewed each other how we viewed ourselves and I talked about how or no that wasn't it it was the what's changed what's helped us change in our lives or something like that or something we did in high school and I started talking about FFA and how I was a state officer and everything and how for my retiring address here at Clemson in the Brooks Center how I talked about <clears throat> when I was physically, mentally, sexually, and every other kind of abuse by my ex-boyfriend. But the way I talked about it, it was more of telling them how it helped, how people helped me and how I helped change, how I got out of everything, and just be able to get out there and connect with all the 800 FFA members that were in the audience that got to hear me was great after I had at least a good 10 girls come up to me afterwards telling me how they have been going through the exact same thing and listening to what I had to say and how I got over it and how I overcome came everything helped them realize that they're too good for the situation that they were in and that they deserve better and to hear that afterwards that they actually went out got rid of the guy and started off better and actually started to feel better about themselves it was a really great experience for me and honestly I thought when I went to work this workshop that's what we were going to be talking about how we view ourselves the whole feeling of self-hatred or feeling that you're not good enough or anything like that. Honestly, I think this dialogue is a component of Library 100 is to kind of go into a place and meet new people and actually open up and have a true dialogue with each other. How to sit there and talk and actively listen. How to make friends and how to open up about your own problems without kind of having your own self-pity and keeping everything in locked up and then eventually just exploding because the college life really is very overwhelming to most people and if you don't open up and share it with people eventually you're going to crack and you're going to either have a complete meltdown and end up going home or something bad is going to happen. These dialogues are used to actually show you that or show you how to talk to people honestly it is a very useful tool without it many people might not be able to meet new people library 100 actually helps 
you see other freshmen in your class other than the people that are just in your majors and help you kind of connect with one another. Well, I'm not sure what else to say, so I'm going to leave it at that and the fact that I really do think this dialogue was a very big, useful tool in transitioning from being in high school to college.